It's Mrs. Spalding. And it, we're just in time for story time with Mrs. Spalding. And today I'm in my kitchen. I wanted to go outside, but it's kind of overcast. So I thought I'd come here to my kitchen. I love my kitchen. So how are you guys today with the pandemic and all? Doing okay? Thumbs up. I see you. Thumbs up. Well, I'm doing great. Malia and I have been inside. I did my walk. Um, try to look over Malia's shoulder, make sure she was doing her work, fits dinner, just boring stuff to you. Um, did some laundry, you know, things that your mom and dad probably do as well around the house. And so, I am so glad to see you. You've made my day just being here. Okay. Well, I do have a story for you today. And my daughter promises that it's real funny. She's, oh, I love it. So, if you don't like it, blame her. But the name of the story, ta-da, see you even better. Hey. The name of the story for today is called... The story of little Babaji, Babaji, B-A-B-J-I. I think that's how you pronounce it. Forgive me if I'm wrong. The story of little Babaji, and it's written by Helen Bannerman, and it's illustrated by Fred Marciano. Marciano. That's who illustrated the story. Okay, let's get started, shall we? Okay, let me, this is a little... Thing here that they want you to know that the story was originally published as the story of little black Sambo on page seven. The note to parents explains its happy transformation in 1996 into the story of little Babaji, a presentation that is more in tune with social mores of today. Okay. I don't know if y'all know about Black Sambo or not, but it wasn't very complimentary to people of color, like especially black people like Miss Spalding. So um, I guess Helen Bannerman changed the story a little bit so it wasn't insulting. Okay. All right. So here we go. Once upon a time, there was a little boy and his name was Little Babaji. And his mother was called Mamaji, and his father was called Papaji, and Mamaji made him a beautiful little red coat and a pair of beautiful little blue trousers, and Papaji went to the bazaar and bought him a beautiful green umbrella and a lovely little pair of purple shoes with crimson soles and crimson linings, and then wasn't little Babaji grand? Look at them. See, there's Babaji. And there's his parents taking, getting his picture taken because he looks so nice. So he put on his fine clothes and went out to walk in the jungle. And by and by, he met a tiger. And the tiger said to him, little Babaji, mm, I'm going to eat you up. <gasps> what would you do if you ran into a tiger and said he's going to eat you up? I'd be so scared. I think I would just run off. Let's see what little Babaji does, though. And little Babaji said, oh, please, Mr. Tiger, don't eat me up, and I'll give you my beautiful little red coat. So the tiger said, very well, I won't eat you up this time, but you must give me your beautiful red little coat. So the tiger got poor little Babaji's beautiful little red coat and went away saying, now I'm the grandest tiger in the jungle. And little Babaji went on, and by and by, he met another tiger. 
Ay, ay, ay. That's bad luck, isn't it? Two tigers. I can't imagine. And this tiger said to him, little Babaji, I'm going to eat you up. <laughs> and little Babaji said, oh, please, Mr. Tiger, don't eat me up. And I'll give you my beautiful blue trousers. So the tiger said, very well, I won't eat you this time. But you must give me your beautiful little blue trousers. So the tiger got poor little Babaji's beautiful little blue trousers and went away saying, no, I'm the grandest tiger in the jungle. And little Babaji went on and by and by he met another tiger. And it said to him, little Babaji, I'm going to eat you up. And what did little Babaji say? Oh, oh, please, Mr. Tiger, don't eat me up. And I'll give you my beautiful little blue, oh, little purple shoes with crimson soles and crimson linings. But the tiger said, what use would your shoes be to me? I've got four feet and you've got only two you haven't got enough shoes for me. But little Babaji said, you could wear them on your ears. So I could, said the tiger. That's a very good idea. Give them to me and I won't eat you this time. Okay, so there. Oh, wrong. Oh, is that the right page? Yeah. So there's the first tiger wanting to eat him. And there's like the third one. And he's like, you can wear my shoes on your ears. And he fell for it. So that's good. Do you think Babaji can go home without any more tigers? I hope so. Let's see. Okay, ready? So the tiger got poor little Babaji's beautiful little purple shoes with crimson soles and crimson linings and went away saying, now I'm the grandest tiger in the jungle. And by and by, little Babaji met, you guessed it, another tiger. Ay, ay, ay. And it said to him, Little Babaji, I'm going to, you guessed it, eat you up. And little Babaji said, oh, please, Mr. Tiger, don't eat me up. And I'll give you my beautiful green umbrella. I think that's about all he had left. But the tiger said, how can I carry an umbrella when I need my paws for walking with? You could tie a knot in your tail and carry it that way, said little Babaji. So I could, said the tiger. Give it to me and I won't eat you this time. So we got poor little Babaji's beautiful green umbrella. Now I'm the grandest and all tiger in the jungle. And poor little Babaji went away crying because the cruel tigers had taken all his fine clothes. Presently, he heard a horrible noise that sounded like grrr. And he got louder and louder. Oh, dear, said little Babaji. There are all the tigers coming back to eat me up. What shall I do? So he ran quickly to a palm tree and peeped around, around it to see what the matter was. And there he saw all the tigers fighting and disputing which of them was the grandest. So there's a tiger with the umbrella. 
He looks funny, doesn't he? And here's all, here are all the tigers arguing, arguing amongst themselves about who's the grandest. See, there's the, the first tiger that has his shirt. And there's one with his pants. There's one with the umbrella. And then there's one with the shoes. And at last, they all got so angry that they jumped up and took off all the fine clothes and began to tear each other with their claws and bite each other with their great big teeth. And they came rolling and tumbling right to the foot of the very tree where little Babaji was hiding. And he jumped quickly in behind the umbrella. And the tigers all caught hold of each other's tails as they wrangled and scrambled. And so they found themselves in a ring around the tree. Then when the tigers were very wee and very far away, little Babaji jumped up and called out, Oh, tigers, why have you taken all of your nice clothes? Don't you want them anymore? But the tigers only answered, grrr. Then little Bajaji said, if you want them, say so, or I'll take them with me, away with me. But the tigers would not let go of each other's tails. And so they could only say, grrr. So little Babaji put on all his fine clothes again and walked off. And the tigers were very, very, very angry. But still, they would not let go of each other's tails. And they were so angry that they ran around the tree trying to eat each other up. And they ran faster and faster. Okay. There's all the tigers getting mad at each other. And there's the tigers around the tree about to grab grabbing each other's tails and here they are going around and around faster 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 around the tree oh my goodness they went faster and faster and faster till they were whirling around so fast that you couldn't see their legs at all all and they still ran faster and faster and faster till they all just melted away and there was nothing left but a great big pool of melted butter or ghee, as it is called in India, round the foot of the tree. Now Papaji was just coming home from his work with a great big brass pot in his arms and when he saw what was left of all the tigers, he said, oh, what lovely melted butter. I'll take that home to Mamaji for her to cook with. So he put all of it into the great big brass pot and took it home to Mamaji to cook with. When Mamaji saw the melted butter, wasn't she pleased? Now, she said, we'll all have pancakes for supper. So she got flour and eggs and milk and sugar and butter. And she made a huge big plate of the most lovely pancakes. And she fried them in the melted butter, which the tigers had made. And they were just as yellow and brown as little tigers. And then they all sat down to supper and Mamanji and 27 pancakes and Papaji ate 55. So, oh, Mamanji ate 27 pancakes and Papaji ate 55. But little Babaji ate 169 because he was so hungry. I think I'd be hungry after all that, <laughs> too. And that's the end. See, let me show you the pictures. There is, there are the tigers going round and round and round real, 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 real fast. And there is where the, all that's left of them is better. And they look at little, look at the little boy. He is all stuffed. Look at the body.
And that, I believe, is, and that's the end. Now, that was just a funny story, wasn't it? Okay. Do tigers talk? No. <laughs> but they were so busy fussing about who's the best in the jungle, the grandest in the jungle, that they ended up losing the very thing that they wanted the most at the time. And then they were all arguing and it didn't even, and for what? And then they became butter. And then they were yummy in someone's tummy. Okay, so hope you don't waste your time arguing about who's the best. We're all the best. We all have gifts and talents. No one person is better than another person. We're all wonderful. We're all great. We all have gifts and talents. So let's not argue about who's the best or who's the grandest. We don't want to be melted butter like the tigers, do we? No. Okay. Hope you enjoyed the story. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye, everyone.